Hi, fourth grade. I'm experiencing a lot of technical difficulties tonight, so I don't have the words of the book projected for you, but turn to page 69 and begin chapter 13. After cutting the dragon free, Min Lee's knife was dull, and the skin of her fingers and toes was wrinkled from having been in the dragon's lake of tears for so long. She was also very thirsty. The dragon offered to carry her to the freshwater stream. He knew the forest well. You'll get there much faster, he said. Min Lee was a little doubtful about riding the dragon. It was one thing to climb on top of him while he was half covered with water, but now on dry land she realized how large he really was. The dragon was long, as long as the street in Min Lee, in front of Min Lee's house. If he stretched himself up on his arms and legs, he was as tall as a bird's nest in the tree, she realized. Even now, bending down for her, he was higher than her house. But he bent his elbow for her like a step, and with two hands she boosted herself up and then climbed onto his back. The round ball on the dragon's head was the size of a small melon, just big enough for her to wrap two hands around, and she clutched it as the dragon began to move. It was faster, but not much. The dragon was nimble, but his large body had to constantly maneuver around trees and rocks, so it was awkward going. The constant jerking and min made Min Lee feel like she was riding a huge water buffalo, and the dragon ducked underneath branches and swerved through trees. Min Lee stood, understood why most dragons flew. Dragon, Min Lee asked suddenly, how old are you? Old? The dragon had said, and again it seemed a question. He had never been asked. I don't know. Well, Min Lee said, how long have you been in this forest? The dragon thought hard. A long time, he told her. I remember when a bird flew from the sky and dropped a peach pit onto the ground. I watched that pit grow into a tree, and the peaches fell from the tree, and more trees grew from the pits of those peaches, until it became a grove of peach trees that the monkeys have now taken over. He is very old, Min Lee thought to herself, imagining the growth of the trees. Dragon must have been in this forest for a hundred years and she felt a pang of pity as she imagined the dragon, alone, unable to fly, endlessly struggling between trees and branches. After picking up her things and drinking at the freshwater stream, Min Lee climbed back onto the dragon's back. She soon fell asleep, her head on the dragon's ball and her hand holding her rice bowl. Noticing she was asleep, the dragon moved slowly and quietly, even when the water from Minley's compass splashed and trickled down his nose. It was only when a loud shrieking filled the forest that Minley woke. It was such a wild and harsh noise that she bolted up, her eyes wide open in fear. Do not worry, the dragon told her. It is just the monkeys. And it was the monkeys. Even though the sun was dimming, Min Lee could still see the monkeys clamoring in the trees. Even though Min Lee could not count many of them, that many of them, their screaming made it sound as if there were thousands. We are getting close to the peach trees, the dragon told Min Lee. They are getting angry. Stop here, Min Lee said. She climbed off the dragon's back, and she could see, still see the monkeys through the trees and branches, their bared teeth flashing. Those peach trees are ex exactly the direction we want to go, Min Lee said. We have to get past the monkeys. I could, st I could force my way through, but the monkeys will attack you, dragon said. I am not sure if we could get you through unharmed. Listen to them and the monkeys continued to scream. Min Lee covered her ears with her hands, but she could still hear them. It seems like they were screeching, Get away from here! Hours, hours, all hours! You are right, Min Lee told the dragon. They are not going to let us through.
but you said that this is the way to the old man of the moon the dragon said correct minley nodded the monkey shrieks were starting to sound like hysterical laughter getting louder and louder like a volcano about to erupt she looked from side to side but the monkeys seemed to be everywhere there was no way around them then the dragon asked what are we going to do chapter fourteen <coughs> minley and the dragon had sat in the clearing and made camp for the night as the sun fell and the moon rose the dragon showed her how he could make sparks by scratching his claws against a stone and they built a small campfire as when lee and the dragon made no moves to go farther into the forest the monkeys had quieted down but they still watched there are plenty of peaches for all dragon said those monkeys do not have to be so greedy really min lee asked yes dragon said the monkeys are so foolish they just want more and more even when they do not need it i have seen them refuse to let go of rotten mushrooms and fight over piles of mud at these words, Minley sat up, and her eyes flashed with quick thinking. Piles of mud. Suddenly, Minley remembered the two children fighting over their piles of mud as she left her village. Instead of going inside for dinner, the children had clung to their pretend dishes of dirt. They were so foolish. Could the monkeys be that foolish? Were they too selfish for trading or bribes? They were too selfish for trading or bribes but maybe they were so greedy that they could be foolish enough to be tricked maybe if she i'm going to make rice minley said abruptly oh the dragon said you must be hungry too bad we cannot get you some peaches it's not for me minley said and she smiled mysteriously it's for the monkeys the monkeys the dragon said why if you mean it as a gift or a way to bribe them it will not work they will take it and eat it but they still will not let you through that's what i'm expecting minley said as she filled her pot with water and uncooked rice she was bursting to tell the dragon her idea but wasn't sure of how much the monkeys understood of their words she looked at him with sparkling eyes but he only stared back blankly you are the dragon said i do not understand don't worry minley said and with her eagerness she felt like the water was boiling i think i know how we can pass the monkeys the dragon watched as minley stirred the big pot of rice through the rising steam he could see the beady eyes of all the monkeys glittering through the branches like hundreds of diamonds as they watched as well the monkeys are watching, he whispered to Minley. Good, she whispered back. I hope they are. When the rice was done, the pot was overflowing with snowy white rice. It was so heavy that to take it off the fire to cool, she had to ask the dragon to move it for her. Minley had the dragon place it very close to the trees where the monkeys were watching. Then Minley tied her fish net over the rice in the pot. As Minli and the dragon turned away, they could hear the monkeys chattering. The fish net will not stop the monkeys from taking their rights, the dragon said. It is tightly woven, but their hands will probably fit through. I know, Minli said, as she put out the fire. Let's pretend that we think the rice is safe and we are letting it cool. Though puzzled, the dragon nodded. They placed themselves a far distance from the rice, yet still within sight put out the fire and pretended to go to sleep but minley could not help peeking though she tried to lie still she was filled with excitement would her plan work would the monkeys take the rice in the bright light of the moon the monkeys glanced slyly around them and stole over to the rice the dragon was right just as he had said the fishnet could not keep the monkeys from the rice their slender hands slid through the holes of the fishnet and grabbed two big fistfuls of rice but as the monkeys tried to carry the rice away, the net caught them. The holes in the net were large enough for their empty hands to fit through, but not large enough for their full fists. The monkeys screamed and pulled, and then Lee and the dragon could no longer pretend to be asleep. 
They couldn't help laughing as they watched the monkeys struggling to punch the air in each other with their trap fists. Then Lee quickly packed her things and the monkeys screeched and shrieked as they passed. The heavy pot of rice shook as the monkeys fought violently to get free. But the fishnet was strong and well woven, and since the monkeys were too greedy to let go of the rice, then Lee and the dragon entered the peach grove and continued through the forest.